In this video, we're going to be continuing our uh, topic of revenue. So this is video number two that I've made on this topic so far. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the different diagrams that we can draw, okay, with revenue curves. Okay, so the first diagram is the price taker diagram. Okay, so this is what you would draw in the case of a competitive market. Okay, so if you're drawing a demand curve or a revenue curve, in the case of competitive markets, so perfect competition, for example, you'll be drawing this curve here. Okay, this is the one you're gonna draw. Okay, so as you can see, it's a perfectly elastic demand curve. Okay, it's completely horizontal. Why is that? Because the firm is a price taker. The firm has to accept the price in the industry, this price here, price P. Okay, if it prices below that, it makes no sense. If it prices above that, it's gonna lose all its customers, okay? So, how can we calculate the revenue that is made? Well, just like in the previous video, we do price times quantity. So at point A, the revenue that is made is price P times quantity Q. And this here is the revenue that is made, okay? Now, what about if the firm wants to calculate its marginal revenue? How would it work that out? Okay, well, if we sold an extra unit, let's say we go from there to there, this is the amount of extra revenue that we would make. And can you see that the price is still the same at this point? So as the price doesn't change, you're just selling an extra unit, that means the average revenue, the price, is equal to the marginal revenue. So in this diagram, the horizontal demand curve, as you can see, Average revenue equals marginal revenue. It's the same thing, because there's no difference in price at different quantities, okay? So now we're gonna move on to the price maker diagram. So price maker, this will be in a non-competitive market, okay, or imperfect competition. This might be drawn in the case of monopoly, okay? So here we have the diagram. The first difference you'll notice is that they're downward sloping curves now, okay? So this is the demand curve equals the average revenue curve. But now we have a different curve that's drawn for the marginal revenue. They are no longer the same, like in this diagram where they were the same. Now there are two curves, okay? And I'll explain why in a minute. So first of all, let's look at this point here, okay? Let's call that point A and let's call that point B. At point A, what is the revenue that we make? It is price P times quantity Q. So it's this box here, okay? So what about if we produce a little bit less rev uh, quantity? So let's go from here to here, so to B. What would happen? Well, in this case, we would lose this box here. Okay, we would lose that in revenue. This would be lost. Okay, and this is what we get to keep. However, at lower quantities, this firm is a price maker. It can increase the price because it can still attract demand with an increased price at this point here. So with an increase in price, the firm actually gains a bit of this. Okay, so the new total revenue goes from, from here to here. Okay, and it loses that, but it gains that. Okay. So it's slightly different to this one here. When the, when, the, when the quantity changed before, it was very simple to see what the firm gained. Now, the firm loses some here, but it gains some up there. And that's why the marginal revenue is different that, to, the, to the AR curve. At different quantity levels, there are different prices. So the marginal revenue cannot be the same as the average revenue. Okay, so I'll just reset, I'll say that again. So when quantity changes, so does the price. Okay, so the marginal revenue is not the same at each quantity level, which is why you draw marginal revenue curve and an average revenue curve separately. I hope that made sense. Any questions, leave it in the comments section below.